The Phoenix and the Carpet This story is about the adventures of four children. They lived with their parents and baby brother. The family also had a cook. The children had their own playroom in the basement of the house. One day, Robert, Cyril, Anthea, and Jane decided to test some fireworks they had bought. It was pouring outside, so they did it in their playroom. The children's idea led to smoke, fire, and a ruined playroom carpet. Their mother had to go and buy a new carpet the following day. When the last fold of the new carpet had been unrolled, something made a loud sound as it bumped onto the floor. All the children scrambled for it, but Cyril was the fastest. He took it over to the lamp to get a better look. The object was shaped like an egg and was very yellow and shiny. It was made of stone, but was half transparent. There was an odd sort of light in it that changed as Cyril turned it around in his hands. The egg was put on a shelf above the fireplace to brighten up the playroom. A few evenings later, the children were sitting around in their playroom, feeling very bored. To entertain themselves, the children decided to try to make some magic. They drew strange shapes and figures on the floor with chalk and sang songs, but nothing happened. Anthea suggested they make a magical fire with sweet-smelling wood. Again, nothing happened. Then they got some cloths from the kitchen and waved them in the air as they sang more songs. Still, no magical things happened. As they began waving the cloths around even more wildly, Roberts suddenly caught the yellow egg and knocked it off the shelf and onto the hot ashes in the fireplace. Oh, no! the children cried. It's not smashed, said Robert as he picked up the egg. It was much hotter than it should have been for such a short time in the fire, and Robert had to drop it. The egg fell back into the fire. The children were discussing how to take the egg out of the fire when Anthea cried out, Look! Look at it! The egg was now red hot, and something inside was moving. All of a sudden, there was a soft, cracking sound. The egg burst in two, and out of it came a flame-colored bird. As the bird rested in the flames, the children could see it growing bigger and bigger. The bird rose in its nest of fire, stretched its wings, and flew out into the room. They could feel warm air as it passed by. Finally, it landed in front of the fireplace. The children looked at each other as Cyril put out a hand toward the bird. The bird put its head to one side and said, Be careful, I am not cool yet. As the children stared at the golden-colored bird, Robert said, I believe I know what it is. He then hurried away to his father's study to find the picture he had seen before. You're the phoenix, said Robert, as he showed everyone the picture. My fame has lived on for two thousand years said the phoenix. The phoenix was almost cool now, so it flew and settled on the table. Cyril read from an encyclopedia, telling everyone what was written about the phoenix. However, the phoenix disagreed. 
so it told the children its story. I am the only bird of my kind in the world, began the phoenix. Every five hundred years, I lay an egg, burn myself, and then I go to sleep. I wake up inside the egg and start life all over again, continued the phoenix. One day, a prince gave me a magic carpet. And because I became tired of being reborn, I laid my egg on the carpet. I told the magic carpet to take the egg to a place where it could not hatch for two thousand years. Then someone would light a fire and put the egg in to hatch. What the phoenix said had happened. But the carpet. Said Robert, "The magic carpet that takes you anywhere you wish. What happened to it?" "Oh, that," said the phoenix, as it pointed to the new carpet on the playroom floor. "That is the carpet." Just then, the children heard their parents at the front door. "Oh," whispered Cyril. Now we will be in trouble for not being in bed. In a hurried whisper, the phoenix said, "Get on the carpet, and wish yourselves there. Then wish the carpet back to the playroom." The children did as the phoenix said. Before they knew it, they were in their bedrooms and in bed. The children heard the soft voice of the phoenix through the darkness. I shall sleep on the curtain rail in your bedroom. Please, do not mention me to your parents. The next morning, the children went down to their playroom, sat on the carpet with the phoenix, and said, "We wish to go abroad." Unfortunately, their first adventure had some problems. The carpet had been flying along for some time before they saw a tower. Jane wished the carpet to land on the tower, which turned out to have no roof. The carpet and three of the children ended up at the bottom of the tower. Robert got stuck on a window sill as they descended. So Cyril wished the carpet back up to get him down. That meant the children had made three wishes so far. When the children tried to wish themselves home, nothing happened. That is how the children found out that the carpet would only allow three wishes each day. With the help of the phoenix, the children and the carpet. Finally, returned home. The next day, after seeing the mud on the carpet, the cook became angry and complained to the children's parents. Since the children could not explain how the carpet had gotten covered in mud, it was locked away for a week. Never mind," said Anthea. "We have the phoenix." Unfortunately. The phoenix was nowhere to be found. Everything suddenly changed from the wild beauty of magical happenings to a common, ordinary life. At last, on Saturday, the carpet was returned to their playroom. While the carpet had been locked away, the children had been thinking about where their next adventure would be. Their baby brother had a very bad cough, so they decided to go to a place where his cough would get better. They dressed in their outdoor clothes because they didn't know what kind of climate they would be going to. Anthea rushed through the house in one last attempt to find the phoenix. It's no use waiting for it. She said, "But I know it hasn't deserted us. 
It's a bird of its word. Quite so, said the gentle voice of the phoenix from under the table. Everyone fell to their knees and looked up. The phoenix was sitting on a crossbar of wood that ran across under the table. I have been here all the time, said the phoenix, yawning politely behind its claw. The phoenix flew over and settled on Robert's wrist. The children sat on the carpet and were about to make a wish when the cook came bursting into the room. She was furious because someone had broken her only big dish. Anthea tried to apologize, but the cook was so angry that she did not want to listen. The cook then asked why they were all dressed in their outdoor clothes. Before the cook could ask any more questions, Anthea said, I wish we were on a sunny southern shore where our baby brother's cough would stop. In an instant, they all felt as if they were being lifted up, spinning around and then falling. The instant the movement stopped, the cook opened her eyes, let out a very loud scream, and then shut her eyes again. The carpet had done exactly as Anthea had wished. They were sitting on a sunny beach with sand the color of gold, and they were in the hottest weather you could imagine. There were green slopes and a forest behind them, as well as a sparkling blue sea in front of them. The cook opened and closed her eyes two more times, screaming each time she did. This must be a dream, the cook said at last. Cyril and Robert tried to tell her that it was real, but she became upset and angry. Calm down, the phoenix said to the cook. When the cook saw who had spoken to her, she said, A talking bird? This must be a dream. The children removed their outdoor clothes because it was too hot. They decided that the safest thing to do with the carpet would be to leave the cook sitting on it. The cook thought it was all a dream, so they didn't think she would go anywhere. The children then left to explore inside the tangled mess of trees in the forest. The phoenix flew off. It came back and told them where a path was. The path turned and twisted until the children found themselves in a forest clearing. There were a lot of huts with pointed roofs. They knew at once that these must be the huts of savages. Jane was scared because she thought the savages might eat them. Just then, a tall man with hardly any clothes on came out of one of the huts. He was holding a spear. The man shouted something the children could not understand. More people came out of the huts. The children didn't want to wait to see if the savages were friendly or not. They turned around and ran back along the forest path to the beach. The children could hear the savages running after them. They arrived at the beach to find no cook, no clothes, and no carpet. The children ran into the sea because they thought the savages would hate water. The savages stopped at the water's edge, pointing and talking excitedly. Look, said the phoenix, what are the savages pointing at? The children turned to their left and saw a head with a white cap on it. It was their cook. They hurried over to her. Where is the carpet? asked Robert. And 
Why are you in the water? I was hot, so I said, I wish I was in a cold bath, said the cook. Just like that, the carpet had taken her to the nearest and largest bath, which turned out to be the sea. The carpet was under the cook in the water. Excuse me, said the phoenix, but I think these people want your cook. To eat, whispered Jane. Not to eat, replied the phoenix. They want to make her their queen. Everyone laughed at the idea of the cook becoming a queen. Since they now knew the savages wouldn't eat them, the children lifted the carpet and carried it onto the beach. The children couldn't understand why the savages wanted their cook as a queen. The phoenix explained that the savages had an ancient prophecy. It said that a great queen with a white crown would someday rise out of the sea. The prophecy had been fulfilled by the cook being carried out of the sea with her white cap on. Cyril turned to the cook and explained what the savages wanted. The cook said, I've always wanted to be a queen. She thought it was all still a dream, so she quickly accepted the offer. The people from the village emerged from the forest with flowers for their new queen and began to dance. It was a dance that the children had never seen. It made them feel as if they were in a dream. The children decided it was time to go home. They put on their outdoor clothes and said farewell to the cook, who was being led away to her new home. Anthea said, Home! And the intelligent carpet, in one whirling moment, laid itself down on the playroom floor. The children's parents could not understand what had happened to the cook, and the children said nothing. A few days later, very early in the morning, Anthea crept downstairs in her pajamas. She had been worrying about the cook. She wished herself back to the southern shore. Anthea felt satisfied when she saw that the cook was happy. So she sat on the carpet and said, Home!